welcome. Ooh. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Creatives Chat. Join us as creative minds get together and chat about who knows what. We shall begin our show now. Streaming from Retro Earth Studio and brought to you by We Are Storically Conscious Brand Apparel And welcome to another episode of Creatives Chat. Hi, I'm Rusty. I'm Peter. And Peter, today, who do we have on our show? Oh, man, Rusty, we have Don Spiegelberg, a heart coherence coach, a fencer, an overround healer who helps people awaken and tap into their life purpose, all while healing them and helping them really heal themselves. I'm super excited to have her on today. She's the host of Live by Heart today, along with Wendy R. Wolf. So let's get to it, Rusty. I'll bring her up to the front. Have a great show. Everybody, meet Don. Oh, Don, I am so excited to have you on the show today. We've chatted before, and I love the conversation. We had to get you on Creatives Chat. <laughs> How are you doing Thanks, today? Thanks, Peter. I'm good. Thank you. So just to really just get the ground moving, for our listeners, how would you describe a heart coherence coach? Oh, that's a great <laughs> question. So uh, I would first talk about what coherence means. Yeah, yeah, coherence yeah. is the quality of unified wholeness, Ooh. Ooh. right? Yeah. Uh, unified wholeness implies not just our physical body, Mm -hmm. So my heart's beating in, in a unified way and it increases when I stand up from my chair and go for a walk, right? My mm -hmm. digestion is working. And so our physical bodies are a unified wholeness that allows us to live and express and all the things work together. My lymph is working, mm -hmm. right? The hormones are working properly. And then of course, when things aren't working properly, we call it a disease. But unified wholeness physically is a, is a thing. And then there's the unified yeah. wholeness of my physical body and my mental body. Mm. So that the mm. thoughts that I think and the desires that uh, the beliefs that I have, they're also unified with my physical being. And then there's the yeah. spirit. So, and for me, this has to do also with my ancestors. So as you can tell, I, I have a Celtic background, <laughs> both Irish and Scottish. Yes. Right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so when I hear the music of those cultures, it really sings to me and I feel unified when I he just mm. hearing that music. So it's mm. trans. It's transposing between the physical and the mental and the spiritual just with sound, which vibration does, right? Yeah, when yeah. I visited Ireland, I stepped off the plane and took a big breath and saw children with ruddy cheeks wearing t-shirts and it was 50 degrees out. And, you know, the men and the women, just the smells and the feel, it all felt right. It all felt Ooh. a unified whole. So, uh, coherence a coherence coach touches on all these aspects and uh it just brings them all together the physical mm. the mental and the spiritual yeah. i love it i love it no i knew why we vibe for a reason because again like i largely see true health you know our internal world manifests into the external one and if there's misharmonies in any aspect you know from yeah. the physical giving the feedback causes an emotional or mental imbalance and that kind of re i guess you would say it just recycles through and creates more of a physical strain because you're focusing on it more yeah and then you're starting to walk differently changing your gait and everything yeah. just starts to get out of sync in this alignment so i love it well in terms of the kind of i mean 
you're the co-host of Live by Heart today. And I love that show because there's been so many just powerful nuggets that just get dropped throughout the entire, like all the episodes. And one of the things that really resonated with me is that kind of power of like restoration, that power mm. of like rejuvenation. And I think specifically you phrase it as the power of realignment. Mm. And that's one of those words that I just really want to dive into with you because in terms of coherence and realignment, like what has been your personal journey in that? yourself? Mm, that's a great question. So <laughs> physically, I, I've had an interesting journey. Uh, I am a fencing coach. Yeah. So that's very <laughs> physical. But fencing, they've called it physical chess. So you also have to really be thinking while you're fencing. So it's very physically taxing, but it's also mentally stimulating, which is beautiful. And I have a classical coach. So this isn't the sport fencing. This is classical mm. fencing. And I've done sport fencing. I've competed and I got a rating. And so That's that so that cool. was fun. Yeah. Living out every child's dream as their kids. <laughs> right? So and so the truth is I teach I'm teaching fencing again now. Oh, and I'm I'm doing it on Zoom, which means if someone is is desperate to learn fencing, it's it's possible. And why not now, right? Now is a great time to learn it. Uh, but the, the amazing thing, one of the greatest gifts from my teacher, who still practices and, and is still a fencer, is he talks about the spirit. And, mm. right, and on, undaunting will. And, and, and the spirit, which is both humble when you win, mm. but also gracious when you lose. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So oh, yeah. this, this is talking about how you are being, mm. how you are being. So I learned fencing and then moved to Seattle, was fencing and started my career as a massage therapist. Oh. So I was a personal trainer and I worked with fencing with a fencing team when I was on the East Coast. And oh, cool. uh, that was sort of the body focus, right? How do we change the body and affect competition using our body and our mind and our spirit? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I learned more about the body by becoming a licensed massage therapist. And what's amazing about massage therapy and what I love about it so much is that it releases tense muscles. Mm. But not every muscle uh, that feels tight is tight because it's short. Yeah. And that's the, that's the mistake a lot of massage therapists make, right? They say, oh, your shoulder right here is, it feels really tight. And so they try to massage it. But what if it's tight because it's stretched like a rubber band? Yes. Then massage is the wrong application there, right? Ooh, ooh, so it, powerful. Yeah, the massage might feel good because it'll increase circulation, but it's not solving the problem. Yeah. Which is important. So my focus is solving problems. And, and I noticed that I could share with somebody the solution to a problem in their body. Mm. And they would need to adopt the solution. So Ooh. any doctor can provide you a medicine, but if you don't take it, it's useless. It's the same thing, right? I can suggest, oh, you've got tension here because you're slouching all the time right? Yeah. The muscles pulled long. Yeah, and yeah. so change, you know, don't slouch. But if they're, they're not capable of no longer slouching, then mm. they're not addressing the problem. Mm. So then that goes to the mind and what they're thinking, because if they're not capable of changing their slouch, well, why aren't they capable of changing a slouch? And a slouch is our shoulders, which we know is a lot of responsibility. We we carry responsibilities on our shoulders. Oh my god. Right? Yes, so what yeah. if somebody can't sit up straight because they're overburdened by the number of responsibilities they have? So the yeah. solution to this physical situation is now a mental, but then it shifts into their beliefs, which is spiritual. What if they're so burdened by their responsibilities? that they don't feel they have a choice in what they're mm. responsible for. So this is a, how heart coherence helps people because 
heart coherence touches on each one of these. It sees, it identifies where the imbalance is. Is it a physical imbalance? Is the physical yeah. imbalance tied to a mental imbalance? Is that mm. mental imbalance mm. tied to a spiritual belief imbalance? And when yeah. we get to the source of the imbalance, then we change the pattern. Then people are pain-free, they're free in their mind, they're free in their spirit. So mm. coherence is unified wholeness. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I find really fascinating because it's one of the things that I pick up on as well as terms of like pattern recognition and yeah. being able to do and see where the origin could be and how it relates to everything else. Because so many people convince themselves that it's always just one avenue when your body, again, as you talk about the coherence aspect, that threefold nature of, you know, mind, body, spirit, it's that interconnected system that has to be in that perfect harmonious state for us to fully express ourselves. And that was next level with the shoulders and the responsibilities because it, <laughs> it, well, it just clicks so many things because it, you think about people with like low self-esteem because of those responsibilities weighing them down. They don't think they're good enough. They don't think they're doing enough. And you can just see it kind of just bringing down. But when you literally tell someone to, hey, hold your chin up high, smile, you know, like you yes. can feel lighter, like you feel the heart opening up. And that's just so fascinating. So how did you really kind of come into this life of transforming all of those different skills into one just like focused practice? Wow, that's a great question. Um, and before I answer that question, I'm going to blow your mind again and say, because you know this, our confidence lives right here on the front of our shoulder. Yeah. So if your shoulders are weighted, right, you, you yeah. don't have your confidence is closed, right? Yeah. And in order to have confidence, you you open up, which changes your responsibilities, right? And then it allows your confidence to show and it changes where your head and neck are too because mm. this forward head and neck uh isn't isn't yeah. good alignment so it changes the circulation to your brain and it changes your ability to swallow and this is true in el the elderly right there's a point Ooh, in time where they true. start yeah. not being able to swallow very well well they've been sitting around with their head forward like this right in the musculature and look at where gravity's pulling, right? Gravity's pulling here. It's not yeah. pulling into my, right? So it's just fascinating. <laughs> it's amazing. No, I, I love it. I could just go off on that forever. Right, right. Just, just the physical aspect itself. Yeah. We could talk for hours and hours and hours. Just um, how it manifests into this world. Yes. All those internal concepts. But yes. Yeah. So you're, that manifestation, you're describing the law of transmutation of energy, which is? energy shifts from energy and comes into physical form yes right yeah. so yeah, for yeah. example steve jobs had to envision the iphone yeah first and then yeah. he had the mean the ways and the means to make it come into physical form right to make yeah. it an actual thing yes. yeah so yeah. uh your question was how did this all come about? <laughs> yeah, how did it all come together? Like, when did you really tie it into a single, like, focalized practice that you're like, ah, this is it. It has to be that one connected system. Ah, uh, well, I think just like everyone else, you begin to master parts. Mm. So I was mastering the physical. Someone would come to me with a shoulder pain and I'd say, oh, we can fix that, blah, 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 and it'd be fixed. One gentleman came to me, a martial artist, um, he was getting shoulder pain and he went to his doctor and his doctor said, Oh, we need to do surgery. And he said, Oh, I'll get a different opinion. So he came to me and, um, the symptom was shoulder pain. And one of the things he had trouble doing was he couldn't lift his arms up higher than this, right? He couldn't mm. lift his arms up. Yeah. And he's a martial artist, right? So he's got to use his arms. So after one session, he was able to lift his arms up this high, right? He was able to finally yeah. throw his gym wow. bag up, you know, on the top of the locker. And that, and that's, that's mastering the physical form. Yeah. And this is the musculoskeletal physical form. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot about digestion, but, but not enough to necessarily, you know, tell somebody how to be whole, healthy and complete in their digestion. You know, my, yeah. my realm is really the, the body and, and how it moves. Yeah. And then when I noticed the people who struggled 
I would provide a solution. And the people who struggled with that, I, I knew, well, I have to pursue that. Why wouldn't somebody solve their shoulder problem, right? Why wouldn't they yeah. solve their shoulder pain? And the thing was they wanted to, but they didn't see the way through. Mm. And, it, and it wasn't because they were incapable of doing something with their shoulder. It was because they were incapable of perceiving the solution. Hmm. So now I'm, I'm beginning to, well, no, now I've mastered helping people perceive of what's possible. Yeah. Which means they have to believe in miracles to a certain extent because yeah. it seems miraculous. What's a miracle? A, a miracle is something occurring that you can't readily explain. Right? With, yeah, with yeah, your yeah. vocabulary, with your experience, with your... So I perform miracles all the day, all the time, every day with yeah. people's bodies because they can't perceive of being pain-free because they've been in pain for so long. Right. Right. And right. then yeah, yeah, yeah. I perform miracles all day to help people realize that they're thinking. They don't see a solution because their thinking is at the level of the problem. It's not outside of the level of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I feel it. So <laughs> spiritually it's true too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then again, everything is just kind of like the emotions or that in-between realm of that manifestation of it, you know, not the expectation. Dude. Not meeting the reality or the preconceived. Yeah, yeah. We got to talk about emotions right now. And I, oh, and I'm it gonna, flowed into uh, it. Let's get it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'm going to clarify something. Um, when I use the word emotion, I'm meaning one of two emotions. Mm -hmm. And I say that because the organ that we have in our brain called the amygdala mm -hmm. decides one of two things. So when we're presented with a situation, a stimulus, Let's use a bear. I'm walking in my backyard and there in front of me appears a bear. Okay. Yeah. My eyes perceive it. That message gets sent to the thalamus. The thalamus sends a message to the brain and then immediately to the amygdala. My amygdala yeah. is the organ that recognizes what that is and decides, do I need to be afraid? which is the sympathetic nervous system, or do I love this, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll use the situation of a bear. Oh, I'm afraid of the bear in my backyard. Uh, but if I'm walking in my backyard and I see my husband, I love my husband, yeah. right? So we only have two, two things in our autonomic nervous system. It's the yeah. sympathetic, I'm afraid of the bear, or it's the parasympathetic, I love my husband. Yeah. So that's why I say we have two emotions. We fear something or we love it or we accept yes. it, right? Yes, fear. yeah. Fear and love, the ultimate duality in this life. Right, right. So that's what's <laughs> happening in my brain. My mm. eyes see and the message gets to the amygdala and the amygdala says, do I run away from this or do I fight it or do I relax and do I love it? The amygdala yeah the message now to the hypothalamus and it's the hypothalamus that determines mm. what my feeling is a feeling mm. according to candace pert i'm not sure if you've read her book mm -mm. her book is entitled molecules of emotion mm. okay. i think she should have titled it molecules of feeling because there are two emotions love and fear yeah. but her book candace pert right uh she's she's passed on now she, she discovered that every feeling we experience is a physical protein particle. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these protein particles get dumped in our bloodstream from our hypothalamus. And so our entire body is feeling afraid of the bear. Yeah. Or my entire body is feeling the love of my husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why is my whole body feeling it? Because our cells have little sensors on the outside of it, right? Yeah. And the yeah, sensors yeah. on these cells pick up these proteins, feeling proteins. So this is how we can explain a grumpy old man. Okay. So a grumpy old man, say it's a relative and you give him a birthday gift. Can he be happy? He spent the last 20 years being a grumpy old man, right? 
Can he be happy about, about a birthday gift? Probably not. Because mm. these cells have these little receptors. And if you're constantly grumpy and complaining, then you're stimulating the receptors for grumpiness and complainingness. Yeah. Yeah. And the happiness receptors, they wither. Yeah. They're not as strong anymore. Yeah, so yes, during yes. their birthday party, they might say, oh, thank you for this gift. And then they start complaining that they can't open the box. The tape is too, right? Or something. They complain because that's what their body's accustomed to. And cells love to be stimulated. That's their yeah. job, right? They need the information. So this is the mechanics. This is the physiology of feelings. Isn't that powerful? Oh, dude, next level. Because it just goes to show that path of least resistance. Yes. And it's it turns into that feedback loop. Because again, like the way I like to see the body is that it it's our vessel, our vehicle to experience this world in life. But it's yes. a it's a it has to give us those, I guess you would say we collect all the data from our environment and it gives it back to us. The consciousness can determine it and it becomes that again, it's almost that twofold addiction where you become addicted to a feeling and it's again that path of least resistance. So the things that you resist the most don't get us enough, enough love, yeah. enough nutrients. And then, yeah. so that's so, I love that. So it's, to me, it's beyond interesting because when you see that manifest, it becomes its own veil of delusion. It you know, is. It's some, and it's something that we misperceive through. We conceive, you know, our own internal environment through that and it starts to really impact your energy system too, because then you start Directly. to be closed off from scenarios, from experience, from people. So, oh, next level, Don, I love it. Next Directly, level. okay, I wanna talk with you about energy levels, because this is, this is where they come in. And this is what Joe Dispenza talks about a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Energy, energy levels. So if I perceive the bear, and this is my autonomic nervous system called the sympathetic nervous system, which mm -hmm. is designed to protect the vessel that you just spoke about, right? It's designed to protect the vessel. Yeah. Then I got to do something about the bear. And what do we know my yeah. options are? I'm going to run, I'm going to fight it, or I'm going to hide. Yeah. Right. These are your three options. Yeah, yeah. I'm perceiving a threat. And my three options are this. Okay, so here's the question. If I decide to run away from this bear, am I going to use 20% of my capability to run away from the bear? Am I going to use 40% of my capability? Oh, oh yeah, you know, no. no, that 100%, then some with the adrenaline. <laughs> That's right. You're going to dump all your energy because this is survival. You're going to dump all your yeah. energy into mm. protecting yourself, right? So my nervous system, my autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic, the stress response is designed to give me all the, the stored energy it can possibly give me. It's dumping it all for use right now. Yeah. That makes sense? Oh, yeah. So I how many it. people spend day in and day out stressed out? They're Gosh. dumping their energy. Mm. And no wonder they're burnt out. No wonder they feel weak. No wonder they can't sleep. Right? They, yeah, they their immune it. system starts to drop. They can't protect yes. themselves. Their cognitive abilities, yes. the clarity. Yeah. Oh my God. All gosh. of these are yes. studies. You you can't think clearly. Yeah. Three plus three is six. When you're faced with a bear, that's not yeah. important, right? It's getting away from the bear. And it's true of immunity too, right? Your immunity is depressed because you need yeah. all of your energy to run away from the bear. Okay, so let's look at this other side. Let's look at I love my husband right? That's a different physiological response. Mm. That yeah. is my mouth isn't dry because you get dry mouth physiologically when you got to run away from the bear, right? Cause you're not producing saliva. Yeah. It doesn't work when you run away from the bear, right? Oh, yeah. No, but when I see my husband, I start to drool a little bit. <laughs> right? yeah. and my eyes right my eyes get soft and my heart the the beats slow down man yeah, just relax and my breathing is deeper right mm -hmm. and i'm producing a hormone called oxytocin that pleasure drug the, that's right it's the <laughs> it's the love hormone they labeled it the love hormone so what's happening it. in this moment 
my digestion is working it's turned on mm. and all of this is renewing my energy stores when i'm mm. in a love state i'm chill i'm relaxed right all the energy is coming back to my cells yeah renewing myself and mm. that's where we should spend more of our time right renewing mm. ourselves but too many people have threats they've got bears all around in fact you'll find this fascinating before coronavirus there was the number one stressor for people can you guess what it was the number Work. one stressor Work. yeah you're close or it was travel boss oh everybody's boss is the number one stressor so what does that mean they're the bear in the office they're the bear <laughs> in the office but but what else the boss is the one who's responsible for whether or not you keep a job yeah so there's your safety the yeah. boss is responsible for whether or not you get a raise there's yeah. another level of safety and value Ooh, your boss yeah. is responsible for who you work with right and there's another level of your value and right it, the experiences you have in your office so this boss is perceived as a threat yeah. but it's responsible for your life and safety right just so for people blow, working at home yeah right blowing your mind yeah i love it well it just taps into the concept of what we choose to willingly accept and resist and fight and when we kind of don't look within our own environment and try to determine what are, what's the feedback telling me yeah. we lose sight of what's really going on and i love it how it's flowing because it comes into that point of you know being able to i think it's as you put it rewriting your story mm -hmm. being able to change the way you perceive those things being able to change the way you perceive yourself because of all of those things and really change your life story and determine where is it you want to take it and how do you do that? So I guess, what do we do in a world where so many people use their prime, I guess you would say their primary energy sources like, or motivation as that fear or that resisting? Like, what do we, what do you do as a healer to open them up? Yeah. So um, people can't be open unless they want to. Facts. <laughs> unless they're ready, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it can lead them to the water. They, yeah. they may not want to drink, though. Yes, yes. And, and perception comes, perception is the way in which we attain higher consciousness. We yeah. must shift our perceptions. And you know this perception um, journey happens often during your meditation. Yeah. And as you know, uh, I help people practice just step one and step two of heart coherence. I have a fearless heart podcast. I air it also on Facebook so that yeah, people yeah, yeah. get a taste of it. And what is it doing? So it, it takes us from our frontal cortex, which is where we do all our thinking. Mm. And our frontal cortex is the, the analyzing part of us. Yeah. The analyzer is the, am I afraid or am I in love? Right? Yeah. So we shift that analyzer to a different level to be objective, to be more neutral. Yeah. And that's for me, step one. Yeah. Okay. And that, and that step one begins to open the possibility of what's looked at as a miracle because they can't perceive it. Right. That's, that's yeah. stepping through the door. But once yeah. you're that threshold, I find that's the thing where you have that law of inertia come into play where they're like, oh, this is real. Then you get that childlike excitement. And then you just kind of want to get more of that taste. It's true. And you sit in meditation longer. Yeah. Or you get a taste of unified wholeness and you want more of that. And I, I want to mention resistance too, because you, mm. you brought up resistance. Oh, and yeah. I, I had a an insight about resistance recently. Do tell, do tell, I'm curious. <laughs> when we resist, right, we're, it's like we're pushing up against something or we feel like something is pushing up against us, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. resistance oh, yeah. is some, oh, yeah. some sort of pushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And what's amazing is that if there's a if there's a pushing against something, then somewhere inside us we know the truth. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. We have to know that there's a truth. Yeah. So there's a part of us that's resisting the truth. See, I love it because it comes, well, one of my biggest teachings, and it was, again, one of those, you know, you get the downloads and your meditations, or as I like to call it, your digestion of the soul. Um, oh, I love that. It, it transitions into that point where I was like the paths of least resistance and resistance in general, you know, they always are, to me, I see them as red flags or neon lights or big flashing signs that show you need to actually address that. Because again, it's what you were just saying is that, you know, your deeper intuition, that higher self knows that it's that on that other doorway of that is yes. that new pasture. It's that liberation. It's like when you cross that threshold, you're like, Oh, I can let all that go now. And then it's just that weightlessness. It's I actually experience it whenever I go through those things of like liberation or letting something go, cutting the threads of attachment, whatever you want to call it. Almost like, you know, you're coming from the surf, like from deep underwater and you're running out of breath and it's right when you break the surface, it's just that, that weightlessness. And it's just, Oh, that deep sigh of relief because it's all gone. The tension just drops. That it's newfound. Yeah, because you've got the tension of the water and you are desperate to take a breath, but it's not the right time yet. Yeah. Because if you exactly. try to take a breath, you're going to take on water. So, yes, yes that is pressure. I love and in it. that moment when you break the surface and you're, and you're full of air, that's beautiful. With regard to, resistance and you're talking about being free and that that moment of release yeah everything is energy yes yeah, yeah. everything is vibration yes. so you mentioned cutting cords of attachment and that's a very horizontal experience right oh, yeah. like right now you and i are attached be because we've set it up this way and, and, and the attachment that we have is, is a horizontal attachment of me seeing you, me hearing you, me speaking to you, and then yeah. you speaking back to me, right? Very horizontal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my voice is a vibration. The light mm. coming into my eye is a vibration. And those things have to be interpreted by my brain. Yeah. Yes? So when we talk about cutting attachments, Right, like I can turn off my video and then I've cut you off. I've cut you off visually, I've cut you off audially, right? Yeah. But we can still be attached because the vibration can still be there. Truth. The vibration can yeah. still, still be there. And, oh, yeah. and why is this vibration important to talk about? Because, I'll use a great example. If, if, I, if I'm holding a little anger, and you know, liver is really, the place where we can store anger, yeah. right? Yeah. I would, I would get upset or frustrated about something early in my marriage. And I would say, you know, I, I really want this pan put away in this place and I keep finding it in the wrong place and I can't find it when I need it, you know, whatever it is. I'm frustrated yeah. about that. My husband would also get angry in that moment. Mm. And I'd be like, what? Well, wait a minute. I'm just expressing my upset. What, what are you angry about? Right? Like, what are you angry about? But this is it. This is the cord of attachment. So when I have the vibration of anger within me, just like I, I have a violin, just like in a violin, if I pluck the A string of this violin and there's an, another violin on the other side of the room, that A string vibrates even if I didn't touch it. Right? Yes. It's resonance, right? So my A string here resonate and that's a bad a because i haven't tuned it to yet to <laughs> right that resonates with the a string on the other side of the room yeah so Man. my anger was resonating anger in my husband and so he mm -hmm. was angry too yes which means yes. if i resonate at the vibration of love it's going to resonate Yes, his love vibration too. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's why Christ says, right? Um, the greatest of these is love. 
And Christ also says, perfect love casts out fear. Yes. Because it's and, true vibrationally, and it's true physically, and it's true spiritually. Well, and it's the, again, it's the, the power of love is the divine spark that created all. And it's, I think when people really recognize that it's, everything is accomplished through love, every action that we do is because of love, then we can start to master our own divine powers of creation and manifestation. You know, because as I like to say, like everything in this world, when people always ask, like, why would God allow this? Why would God allow that? It's like everything that we've been given is the creation ability. We're gods and goddesses of creation. And we literally manifest things out of this power of love. You love money. You're going to be, you know, you're going to go down that path. You love food. You're going to go down that path. You love sports, you know, whatever it is, it's through a love of it. And it's really funny that you know, the duality of fear and love comes from is because it's like when we overcome the fear with love, we grow. Yes. And so it's just like that interconnected process where it's like, that's why I always like using the the valley of the shadows of death is like, no, it's a, it's a shadow of death. It's not the true death. Yeah. That doesn't come. That's never, that's never going to really happen. It's just another experience. But the valley of the shadows of death is you overcoming your fears to get to the other side, to come into that kingdom of heaven within. And that's the power that I feel like each of us truly has. But we've been so, I guess you would say, like manipulated, misinterpreting, misperceiving our own divine energy. Yes, because we have a bear right in front of us. <laughs> right. And the bear is triggering, or it's my boss that's triggering my fight or flight, my nervous yeah. system. All the so it's a response. real experience. People are really experiencing fear. They're all wearing masks because this is a real threat to them, yeah. right? Coronavirus is a real virus. And, and they perceive it as a threat that's going to get them, right? It's a yeah. real thing. And the people who understand and are able to shift their perception of threats, and, th and this is the important thing, yeah. they're, they're shifting outside of just what they're seeing just what they're mm. hearing this horizontal interaction that you have to deal with because our bodies are designed to take in information and then respond to it right yeah, that's our design yeah, yeah. we we are compelled to deal with it mm. and with heart coherence i assist people in making a different choice yeah. in having control of how they perceive that information coming in, right? So I want to mention, you talk about the life force. You talk about love as being the thing that animates us. Yeah. And, I, and I want to talk about how that and why that is so from an experiment that was conducted by a man named Thomas Young in 1801. Mm, You've probably okay. heard of it. It's called the double slit experiment. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. So there's two metal plates and in the first plate, they cut two rectangles in it. And then they, and they, um, they shot the light, photons yeah. at it, right? Photons. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to see how the photons went through those two verticals, right? The two cuts yeah. and, and what would happen on the second plate. Yeah. So they shot the photons through and what did they see? They saw an array. They didn't see two vertical rectangles. They saw five. And they're like, what? How, are, how is this five? So they decided to look to see how are these photons behaving? Because mm. a wave pattern implies, right? This five yeah. implies that they behave like a wave. And they thought oh, yeah. photons were particles. So they set up a camera to watch it. And the camera watched it. They conducted the experiment again. And what did they get? Two vertical cutouts, just like the original, which means yeah. it behaved like a particle. Right? So now they're really confused. Yeah. Okay. So, Peter, have you heard this? They conducted that experiment again more recently. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, so this is really brilliant. <laughs> they conducted that experiment again more recently because they were then able to say, what if we use a computer to randomly select when we look at it and when we don't look at the particles? This is Ooh. the observer effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know about the observer effect? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so the observer effect is when we look at something, it changes how it behaves. And it's a predictable yeah. way it changes how it behaves. Yeah. It behaves now just as a particle, as yeah. a physical thing. Yeah. It's lost the wave frequency. Why? Because the wave frequency is the creation. And yeah. the creation is the energy that animates all things. Love it. So Love when you it. die, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, you no longer have the animating force in your, in your, within your body because yeah. you've died. And when we observe things, we as human beings are actually flattening the wave curve. We're collapsing yeah. the wave function, which means we are not seeing and perceiving things in their whole entirety -ness. Yes. We make judgments and the judgments are just our analyzer comparing, contrasting, and measuring, yeah. which causes things to behave differently. And that's the illusion. Yeah. That's the illusion you talked about. Ooh. So with the new experiments, this is amazing, they decided to randomly decide when they were going to look at these photon particles and when they were not going to look at them. Hmm. And every time they decided to look at it, it was behaving like a particle. Yeah. And they said, how do these photons know what we're going to do? So then they decided, what if we do all the experiments and then choose in the, after all the experiments are done to look back, right? We're going to choose to look mm. back. Every time the particles behaved like, uh, the photons behaved like particles when they chose to observe it. And all yeah. the scientists are thinking, these particles can't know the future. How is this possible? They can't figure it out, right? But the truth is, this all has to do with God and man, creation, yeah. fear, and love. Yeah. When there is love in everything, just like you said, you see it in its wholeness. It's mm. able to uh, exist in the fullness of itself. Yes, yeah. But if you perceive it from fear, if you perceive it from judgment, um, you know, comparing and contrasting, yeah. then you're not seeing the creative force. You're not seeing what animates yeah. the world. Yeah, you're putting your own blinders on and having creating your expectation through that judgment or that analytical observation, yeah. as they want to call it. And uh -huh. that right there is incredibly powerful to touch on because when you look at any type of self-creation or you know like that rewriting of your story you're kind of taking a pivot turn transforming your life into what you always know it can be inside yes it comes to that point where you have to let go of those expectations and assumptions that you make about yourself and i find that's the thing about being in the flow or being open and loving and kind is that we see it in children and we somehow lose it now my theory on why we lose it is it ties in with everything because it's when the hormones become more active and the feedback of the body becomes so strong. We mm -hmm. tend to lose that openness and freedom and then kind of pass and give our authority and power to the physical form. So then everything in our, our, in our the childlike state of observation just becomes way more focalized and the blinders come on and now we can't really see that divine that's always there because yeah. we, we feel like we've lost it. Yes. And a part of it too we can point to our parents and our yeah. ancestors because Ooh. children learn from their parents yeah. about society. And of course we have three basic needs, the need to be safe, the need to be valued and the need to be loved. Mm. And if our parents are not supplying these to us, then we have to somehow manipulate the situation in order to get it yeah. in order to feel it. Yeah. And you know that there are people in there in their 50s, in their 40s and 50s, who didn't get those things from their parents, and now what are they doing? They're buying the red sports car. They're divorcing their wife and marrying someone younger, right? Like, yeah. And we normalize it, midlife crisis. <laughs> exactly. It's not, it's, it doesn't have to be a midlife crisis, but it's a sure sign that you were not taught as a child or given, provided the three basic needs. Because when you become an adult, your parents then have taught you how to provide where you get safety from, 
where you get your value from, yeah. where you get love from. And I say love, right? Where you get the vibration of acceptance, self-acceptance, right? And the vibration of love. Yeah. And all of these don't come from a vertical connection. They yeah. come, I'm sorry, they don't come from a horizontal connection. They come vertically. Ooh. Because Ooh. this is what animates us. Yeah. A horizontal connection is the illusion you touched on. Yeah. This is all an illusion. But it's our vertical connection to the spirit. Yeah, that's the that's, Yes, that's where we get safety. That's where we get our value. That's yeah. where we get our love from. That is the source of never ending all three of those. And it's fascinating because even when you think about that, the same way we get passed on, you know, like the physical information from, you know, the DNA and our parents, you, yes. that emotional information gets passed along and that mental information gets passed along. And the way I like to look at it is, you know, we're all born as like those dry sponges, but the environment that you are raised in, it's just going to start soaking up the waters around you indiscriminately. It doesn't matter yes. if you're dirty or clean. And this process of you know, quote unquote spirituality is that squeezing out of the sponge to really let it dry out by those loving rays of the sun. Mm. And the one thing that really resonated with me was in terms of that vertical connection, because I find, you know, in my own like meditation journey and like the chakra healing, it's the moment I became open and let everything go, just instant connection with the crown yes. and it just flowed all the way through. And it's just like, and you can just feel the energy and it just never leaves you. It radiates from you. Yeah. And it's just that ever, it's an infinite flowing, you know, of the overflowing of abundance of just pure, just life force. And it's so fascinating to me that, you know, we willingly choose to let go of it when we're getting, when we're raising ourselves, when we're going through our trials and tribulations, when we have pains and sufferings and we compartmentalize and put all these walls up around us. Yes. And I'm, cause I guess one of the things I'm really curious on is, you know, being a mother is how do you help your children? How do you help? I mean, as how do we help the, our fellow siblings in this planet when you're healing sure. work? Yeah, really learn to take down those their walls that they've created to get back in touch with the source and the creator. Yeah. So I go back to the three needs, safety, love and value. Yeah. I love and it. it's my job as a parent because I chose to be a parent. Right. I chose yeah. that my children did not choose to be born of me. I mean, right. They, they were, they were the product of my choice and it's my job to provide safety for them, to love mm. them and to value them. And I can say at the beginning with my first, it was a rough journey. Mm. Um, you know, my husband was working through stuff, being a new parent. I was working through stuff, being a new parent, because you learn how to parent because of how your parents parent, right? You learn because of them. Yeah. So if they learned from their parents and those parents right. learn from their parents, then we've, we've all got this pattern of, of stuff. Family, sickly drama and chaos. <laughs> yes. And I'm growing up and I'm providing safety and value and, and love for them. And they are my teachers. I've always said my, my children teach me how to yeah. be a better person. Because yeah. I didn't learn great things from my parents. They, they didn't know how and it wasn't their fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's whole. Oh, I mean, that, that that hits the nail on the head for so many people out there. And I feel like, especially for, you know, myself included within this younger generation, we have a lot of just a lot more open, loving, you know, beings in this world now that mm. were raised in that kind of old school, like not too far off, you know, the generation, you know, my parents, they're raised by a generation that went to war, yes. you know, and I think that's something that people don't want to really recognize is that you see the ripple effect generationally because of these methods and ideologies and again because and i was really funny because i was actually teaching um at the mentorship program with like a lot of the parents the ywca i was teaching parents essentially how to be more you know value their children more how to love them more and how to provide the safety and really just build communication 
Yeah. And it's something that's so lost in the sauce, as I say, with the older generations, because children should be seen and not heard. Children should mm -hmm. be this and not that. And it's it creates this authoritarian hierarchy where it becomes more like a dictatorship, or as yes. I like to call it, judge dread, you know, judge, jury, executioner. And it's it's something that completely compartmentalizes the human spirit at a very young age. And you see the effects of the children where they become more, you know, they, they have less emotional control. They start to act out more. They become really good liars. They become really needy. They detach from their own empathy and become a little sociopathic because of it. Like there's, there's a million different ways it manifests, but ADD, there's the, ADHD exactly. and add and terrible a problem, crappy food. Right. And then you see the whole system start to get out of whack. And in yes. the family unit, when that happens again, like, I love how you said it, you know, your, your children are there to, to, you know, to teach you. And that's exactly as I see it. It's always, you know, the, the parent's role is to teach the child, the child's role is it always self reflects the things you need to work on. Because when they yeah. start to manifest it and express it, you're like, Ooh, I didn't like that. Oh, where'd they learn that from? Oh my gosh, that was me. You know, yeah. it just becomes that opportunity to heal. But that right there is what I really want to transition into is because people don't see things like that. You know, mm. getting, getting people to see things as an aspect of mutual healing. You know, I always tell people in my work that it's, I'm healing just as much as you are right now because yeah. I'm learning something new about myself with every conversation. It's all unfoldment. Yeah. And I find that's something that's so hard for people to really recognize that everything in this life is always intended for us to grow and heal. And we circle back with the resistance comment because it's those avenues of resistance and those paths of least resistance that really are the two focal points that we could really look at in our lives mm -hmm. to start to heal on all the levels, like physically, energetically, spiritually, emotionally. Like, And if there's resistance, part of us knows there's a truth. Yeah. So with parents, if they're wondering, you know, how do, how do I be a better parent? The truth is to shift from this horizontal focus mm. and getting their safety met, getting their love met, getting their value met horizontally and shift it vertically. Parents should be getting love, value, and safety from the source, from divine source. And that's the, that's the first change that will change everything in their lives. Ooh, but what would you say, I guess, for those, you know, got to play the antagonistic role here as the, as the host, yeah. what would you do for people that don't believe in the creator? Like what that don't believe in source or divine energy or right yeah so okay I would find <laughs> out what they believe in uh, do they believe in science I just used yeah. a great ex <laughs> example of a science experiment right so everything is energy and then mm. and then I'll ask them this I'll say when you walk into a room right and your spouse is pissed can you tell yeah you can tell you know why because their very being is a vibrating at a pissed frequency. <laughs> so you have to believe in frequency, right? Yeah. So if you, if you can believe in polypeptides and physical matter, yeah. if you believe that you see a rainbow with your eyes, what is a rainbow? A rainbow is light. What is light? Light is frequency. Yeah. You see red, <laughs> blue, and yellow? That's a frequency. So if you can understand that the whole world is a vibration, the whole world is a frequency, it doesn't matter if you call the thing that creates the frequency a believable entity. Yeah. Right? You don't have to believe in God. But when I can demonstrate that the sun has photons and the photons are wave and particle and they heat the earth and this is a vibration. And oh, guess what? Your telephone, your telephone receives a phone call because of a vibration. And what's the vibration? It is an electron on one end of a wire bumping the next electron that comes out this end of a wire. That's current, right? That's a frequency. So the entire world is vibration and frequency, physical matter shifting into formless, and then the formless shifting into physical matter. And that's all you need to know because the higher <laughs> vibration experience 
you know you feel better when you're happy yeah. you know you feel better when you're when you're experiencing joy and yeah. gratitude so that's a higher vibration and so you as a parent need to focus on maintaining a higher vibration of experience for yourself because yeah. that will also benefit your children and how do you do that you live by heart yes there yes you go. she said it no <laughs> she, said said it, it. Yes. she said it the famous line yeah and, I think and that's living by think. heart is coherence and that's yeah. unified wholeness oh and that's the thing right there where it comes back into that interconnected aspect of just existence on a whole. And I love the way you broke it down, like the, the Western science, you know, the physical aspect of it, because we, what do we get taught that, you know, electrons, you know, you have one electron for this atom, it could be all around the planet. It'll still come back to this atom. But when people really start to think about that, it's really trying to recognize that it's like, yeah, all these energetic aspects to each and every atom and molecule within your own body, is meshed and intertwined with the space around you at yes. all times. And that's the fascinating concept right there because when you begin to, I love the, the pissed off vibration where it's, you know, we can ring it like a bell when yeah. you use love. Love is almost like that force of realignment. You know, when you walk into a room filled with love, people can feel that too. And it's a whole lot stronger and more noticeable than the pissed off. Because oh, it carries, very. it carries that just, it carries a, a lightness and refreshness to a it. Higher vibration. Yes. So yes. this is true of the Buddha, right? Yeah. The Buddha went through that period of time where he practiced asceticism, where, yeah. right, they were beating their body and they weren't eating. And then he sat down in meditation and he said, I'm not getting up from this meditation until I'm enlightened, right? Yeah. And then he, he attained enlightenment. And then what happened? when he was walking and the, the people who were his ascetic group saw him. What did they say? Do tell. His countenance was one of peace, was what they knew he, was, he had attained enlightenment. They felt the love, that they pressure. Felt the love. They felt the vibration of enlightenment in the Buddha. Mm. It's fascinating that it comes back to that because I feel like so many people recognize and they've experienced, I tell people we've experienced that same type of, you know, enlightenment because when we were children, we were in that state already. Yeah. We were born when, and I guess you could say, depending on your environment, maybe that window was shortened before you got completely immersed in kind of like the human play and the conditionings and all the other conceptions and ideologies got poured on. But for the most part, you know, you're spending most of that time in the spirit, you know, and then we kind of come back into that being, or you'd say we're in the beingness, we fall full fledged into the human. Yeah. And then that journey back to source, we have to kind of come back into the being and then harm, harmonize and balance out those scales. And then we recognize, oh, I'm the thing that's been sitting on the whole time. Yeah. And that's, and that's that divide source where you get that vertical alignment where it's just now everything is just flowing through you effortlessly. It's yes. love, it's light, it's, it's just peace. And it's the aroma of our being because it's radiating from us. I love that. The that's, aroma oh. of our being. And that's how we really identify it, right? Like any type of sickness or ailment, we know we've made it. We know we're there because you're not really focusing on a problem. You yes. just feel the peace and the calm and it doesn't matter what's happening at you. It's just, okay. <laughs> yes, because you have this, right? You yeah. have this vertical yeah, rather than a horizontal focus. Yeah. Yeah. I love what you put that too with the horizontal and vertical. Hello. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Creatives Chat. It's been a pleasure having you on our You're show. You're welcome. And uh, for those of our viewers who don't know yet, you have another show that you host with uh, Wendy R. Wolf, who's also been on our uh, past episode of Creatives Chat, and together it's called Live by Heart Today. So we do urge our <laughs> viewers to go and visit Don at Live by Heart Today and uh, reach well. out. You've got the Fearless Heart uh, daily little webisodes podcast. yeah podcast coming out so you're actively on display everywhere you look you're living your purpose so i wanted to say thank you honoring your contract with our thank family. you thank you thank you russ thank it's you been an awesome chat
And I'm going to end on this image that we were talking about how we have or horizontal issues, right? And we have vertical solutions. And if you put that together, you got a cross. And what mm. does the cross re represent? <laughs> and that's all I got to say about that. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Have a happy always. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Hold the outro. <laughs> you guys are awesome. And that concludes this episode of Creatives Chat. Thank you for watching. Join us every Thursday at 3.33 p.m. Pacific Daily Time as creative minds get together and chat about who knows what. View more episodes on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again to our sponsors for making this show possible.